skin. That's, that's just not <laughs> what it is. Has, oh, it's definitely one. You know what I mean? Now, where is he? Yeah, he's all over That's hilarious. Yo, Shad. Yo, Shad. <laughs> oh, I, they're great. I, just to have a part of the, this <laughs> cultural moment. We made it for about three weeks. Okay. We made it for about three weeks. Hey, Grayson Butcher. My kids have been Thank you, I was just teasing you about the camp. You know, I, you know, you know, I was teasing about. Yeah. The meeting of the Shreveport City Council is now being called to order. We have Pastor Juan who will give the invocation and from Grace Community Church, and we will have a pledge to be led by Mrs. Levette Fuller. Let us pray. Eternal One, we give you thanks for this gathering of leaders as they seek to come on good for our people in Shreveport and in this whole Caddo area. Bless them, give them wisdom and understanding. In the midst of this busy season, oh God, may they focus on the business that will make the city better in these last, last few days. Help them also pass the baton to the new leaders. And gracious God, may all be done in a spirit of community, unity, compassion, and love. Bless our city, O oh God, and use these leaders to continue to lead it into the ways of fruitfulness and flourishing, now and in the days to come. Amen. 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 Six the flag and join for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, will you call the roll, please? Present. Present. Councilman Everson. Here. Councilman Zeeman. Present. Councilman Corbin. Present. Councilman Flory. Present. Councilwoman Lynch. Here. And Councilman Bowles. Here. Entertain a motion for the approval of the minutes. So moved. I'll second that motion. All right. It's been moved by the Vice Chair Jenkins and second by Councilman Corbin. The approval of the minutes and the last City Council meeting on December 11. See you both. Number seven. Uh, yeah. Got it. Any council member have any awards, recognitions, or distinguished guests they'd like to uh, pick on this time? I do. I see the first family. I have the first family of District C is in attendance. <laughs> so if they would stand up, Arthur, Francis, and my wife, Ann. Figure they. they oh. As, as Ann pointed out, if we were going to attend one of the meetings, we better get right to it. <laughs> so, so I'm glad that they are here today. So, thank you. Glad to have them here. Um, I have this Keisha Smith. If she would okay. small presentation she wants to come up with. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, <clears throat> I'm a loan officer with Home Federal Bank, and I've been a loan officer for 14 years. Um, last month, uh, I, what I do is I do a lot of different down payment assistance programs to help my buyers get money for down payment so that they will be able to purchase a home. Um, I believed in doing this many, many years ago when a lot of people, a lot of banks wasn't doing it. It's something that I stuck to. And um, I'm always looking for ways to help my buyers get money for down payment. Um, last month, <clears throat> Louisiana Housing Corporation out of Baton Rouge, they came up to interview me, and they told me that I was number one in the state with them for using their money for down payment assistance. Okay. So, I'm proud of that. 
I honestly feel like I've been that way for years with them, but I just hadn't <laughs> asked. And that's just truth. I just never asked, and I didn't know that. But they wanted my advice on how to get other banks involved with what I do and why I do it and, and how I'm successful with it. So I found out about CAFA about six months ago. They're out of Baton Rouge, and I was wondering if they were here because I'm always looking for ways and new programs to help my buyers. And I found out that they were only in South Louisiana, and I wanted them to come up here. And I found Kristen, and she told me more about them and what they do and what they can offer us and how we needed to um, approach you guys with you know, getting them to um, become approved here. So I would like for Kristen to speak and tell you about her in, um, authority. Thank you very much. Um, I'm Kristen Delahousie. Yes, I am with Capital Area Finance Authority in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We're actually a local housing finance authority. LHC, which she referenced, is statewide. Um, I have a picture, uh, a page, that shows you in that little nine parish region, that's our jurisdiction. So anything that we do in that jurisdiction, we keep all the fees. Anytime we go outside of those yellow parishes that we've basically gone into a police jury or a local finance authority there and ask permission if it's okay if we come in and offer our programs we share the fees that we make in those parishes um, so that's just to kind of show you where we are and then where we've gone and two weeks ago I went to do exactly what I'm doing here at DeSoto and got that approved there which means if she's doing uh, if she's doing a loan in DeSoto Parish and there's a need for the down payment assistance, she's able to offer it. So I'd love to get it here in Caddo. I have a list of already approved lenders, already that are, because what we do is we just offer the down payment to the lenders. We don't actually do the financing, so we have to work through approved lenders. And when I look to see who already is approved with CAFA, Who's in here? These are all the lenders that are already approved. So as soon as you would approve it and I get in touch with everybody here and say, all right, you're able to offer our program, anybody that comes in that door that needs that assistance, they're able to offer it to them. Any of the, pro any of the fees that come through, we share that with you, 50%. So if we're making $1,000, 500 comes back to the parish for you to do whatever you want to. Uh, beautification projects I've heard some parishes do I also <coughs> put down at the bottom so year to date at the end of uh, so far it's over sixty three thousand dollars that have gone out to the parishes outside of our, our region some parishes don't do much they're small some of them aren't doing very much some of them are getting two thousand dollar checks a month just depends like I said on the production and since she does so much with LHC and we have all these lenders that are already approved and then of course I would be marketing to lenders that are not on this list the more production we do the more you would get um, and obviously helping out the people that need the assistance I have just a brief little talking point kind of let you know what a CEA is the cooperative endeavor agreement that we would sign and what that means to y'all um, if it's something that down the road it's not working for you, you can just cancel it at any time. Um, it's basically just us asking your permission. Can we come in and allow uh, loan officers like Lakeisha at these, as, at these uh, institutions to offer this? Um, and we have three programs that, that they would be able to be a part of. And if I can say, um, it's not, well, Home Federal isn't on the list yet but I'm going to introduce her to my manager when I get back so that we can become an approved lender but these banks are already here so if you guys allow her to come here Universal, Loan Officers, Eustis, Fairway, Caliber, NOLA, Gateway, Regions their loan officers will be able to take advantage of this particular program and the money will come back to Keto. Right now I'm number one in the state with Louisiana Housing and we're not getting anything from them so you know they also have a 5% <coughs> down payment that I can utilize for my, for my buyers. And so LHC has a 3 and a 4%. I will be able to, you know, get 5%. And the rest of the banks that decide to use this program that's already here, you know, we're going to sell a lot of houses. You know, we have um, a, a lot of buyers that need money for down payment. They go to a lot of lending institutions that may not offer the money for down payment. The loan officers don't know about it. They tell them it's not, you know, it's not in existence, and it is. So 
that's why I've always kind of been a spokesperson for it. But, you know, this is going to open up the way for all of these banks to be able to do it as well if, if they choose to. And I certainly am. And that, that assistance comes in the form of a grant, so they don't pay that back. So that helps them with closing costs. It helps them with um, down payment assistance. It could be prepaid items. So, and we do have something that's called a 0% option. A lot of times people don't need the assistance, but if they're going through CAFA, they can get a lower uh, mortgage insurance. So where it might be 35%, they can get to an 18%. They're able to capitalize on that uh, charter level coverage. So there's just lots of different options. We always say it's another tool in the toolbox. So when she has a borrower come, she's obviously going to look and see what's the best fit for them. And it gives her something else to make sure that they're not walking out there and they're getting into that home. And the way that I structure these is if it's a, and, and they can, my buyers can get money for FHA conventional VA USDA loans. So if it's an FHA loan and the buyer is required to um, put down three and a half percent, I can get them 4% for down payment. My seller, if the seller agrees to pay the closing costs and prepays, the majority of my buyers bring zero dollars to down pay for, to closing. So that's why I'm, you know, some people slow this time of season, I'm busy. So that's how I'm able to structure it to keep, you know, more cash in my buyer's pocket so that they can use it for whatever they need to, you know, upgrades or, you know, appliances or, you know, moving expenses. But if the money is available for my clients and I see that they qualify for it, I get it. Okay. So. Council on the lynch. Oh, okay. Um, so you're talking in terms of parish, are you talking city, just for the city of Shreveport, or entire Cattle Parish? Have you all spoken with the Cattle Parish Commission, the parish governing body? No, I, talk, I called, um, I, well, I've, been, I've been, you know, kind of calling around to see who I needed to address. Commissioner uh, Watts said she's going to um, get her on to speak to the commission. Uh, we need to talk to the, is that who we need to? Yes, uh -huh, because yeah. I'm not sure. In, uh, you know, I mean, the further south you get, you know, you have consolidated right. government where the city and the parish, you know, are combined. Mm -hmm. But in Caddo Parish, we have a parish governing body that covers the entire parish, mm -hmm. including okay. the city of Shreveport. And, you know, this is just for the city council just has jurisdiction over the city. Okay. okay. And so if you want to do, you know, folks in Blanchard or Vivian or Mooringsport, that would be the parish. Okay. And so it is something that we do, you know, need to collectively work together on. Yeah. Okay. So right. to make sure everybody is covered. But I just wanted to make sure, you know, to let you know you got one, one more body to, to, uh, to speak yeah. with. Got, well, good. Uh, yes. Okay. And, well, I'm glad uh, that we were able I, to get in front of uh, y'all today, yes, though. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's, it's been eye-opening, and I think it's, it's something that's needed. And, and I know the commission is already uh, doing uh, some They've already com made some commitments in terms of housing uh, initiatives, and so definitely, um, I think yeah, she said, said uh, she, Commissioner she, she, yeah, Watts. Uh, Stormy Watts. Stormy, is, okay. Yes, uh -huh, I talked to her yesterday. Oh well, no, I talked to her over the, this, this today is Thursday. That happy Tuesday. After I talked to you, okay. Um, I talked to her, and she's gonna get in touch with you and have you to come on and speak to them also. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so great, great. I mean, um, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting a housing boom from all these jobs that are going to be coming in to the uh, city and the parish and so uh, as people make more money you know they want to they want to uh, move up or move on or buy new or whatever so uh, thank you I appreciate it I appreciate it so we'll go and try to get a meeting with them and then they would be the one that would actually do this uh, signing of the cooperative endeavor agreement they would yes make the t okay yes okay. great all right, yeah. all right. Thank, thank you so much thank you so much any Council other Bradford? questions Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so thank you, and thank you as well for coming. Your uh, presentation very, very enlightening. But I agree with the council lady who said that uh, you was referring most of your uh, your your presentation was regarding parish wide. Okay. Now, we certainly should 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 follow up, and I'm going to suggest that. Uh, once you review this with the with the other entity, that is the, the parish commission, that uh, I'm going to invite you back. But I want to invite you back, and we're going to reference it to a committee, so that we can we can get more more in, in, enlightening on how we could participate as a city government. 
So, so again, I mean, there's nothing we can do today except for accept your uh, your proposal and your, and your presentation. But uh, as you move forward, uh, and at the proper time, I mean, you know, ask that you come back and and. Uh, like I said, I'm going to refer this to a committee that we can get more information so that we could determine how best we could, uh, what role we could play as well. Okay. Yeah, very Thank much. You. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Corbin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Another subject. Um, at our last council meeting, I completely forgot. I must have still been in a bit of a fog. Uh, to congratulate track and all of the volunteers uh, another successful Christmas in the sky um, have heard some preliminary dollars out there but I think it was a good fundraising event and um, a good time was had by all who attended yeah. and Great. they gave the City Council an award uh, as well uh, prior to ceremony mm -hmm. and um, Councilman Everson accepted on, be on your behalf mayor <laughs> and, but, uh, and, I think, and I think they must have kept that because I sure didn't keep up with the oh, award. Well, <laughs> so well, yeah. I'll, have to, I'll have to call them. To, uh, we can get them to drop Make that sure. off at the city. <laughs> exactly. They auctioned it off. They may have auctioned <laughs> it off for fundraising. Cool. We'll see. But they did recognize the, uh, the mayor and the city council as well as the commission they and the school board, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, mayor Tyler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and, and members of council. I, too, would like to say thank you to SHRAC, uh, those people, and uh, our city employees who work diligently, of course, to help make it happen for Christmas in the Sky. Uh, they did a lot of work for several months, so I want to say thank you to them. Also, I want to, uh, would like to encourage everyone to support the Walk-On's Independence Bowl game at Independence Stadium on Thursday, December 27th by attending or, attending or watching on ESPN. We'd love for you to come and be there, though. Uh, this year, we are excited to host the Duke Blue Devils and the Temple Isles. This is a great event for our city and an awesome opportunity for us to market the wonderful things we have going on right here in Shreveport. We will be doing exactly some of that in the commercials that will air on ESPN during the game. So please be sure to check those out also. Uh, I also sent uh, an email to council members uh, earlier this morning, I think, uh, telling you about an event that's not, um, it's not a public event, but it is something that, uh, you know, they would like for council members to attend if you can on Sunday evening. Uh, I also would like to thank those of you who attended a city event last week where we were able to showcase our employees at the Combined Employee Recognition Banquet and Employees Leadership Academy graduation, which was held at the Convention Center. So I want to thank uh, Ms. Jackson, who is uh, not with us today. She's out on a sick leave. But I wanted to thank uh, all of the employees uh, who received those recognitions and, and say to them that we uh, are so very proud of the work that you're doing to serve the citizens in our city. Also, heartfelt thanks to those council members who were able to attend the press conference today uh, where, where we gave some highlights, just a few highlights from our fourth year progress report. As you may recall, I committed in 2015 to give a progress report every year to the citizens in Shreveport, so today, we gave our final report, so I do want to say thank you to those who were able to, to come. I know we had three council members that were able to come, Councilman Fleury, Councilman Everson, and Councilman Jenkins. Thank you all for uh, being able to fit that into your calendar. Now, Mr. Chairman and council members, I, wish to, I want to wish every one of you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Uh, it's been my pleasure to serve as your mayor and to work alongside of this great council and I just wish you all the best. So, God bless each of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, I'm sorry. Oh, I thought you were going to say something. Hmm? I'm sorry. Um, one other thing I, uh, I think we forgot to mention was that, uh, and I don't know, some, simila some similarity here. Uh, Councilman Everson's birthday was yesterday, and his incoming uh, Miss Fuller, birthday is today. Oh, wow. So I just wanted to wish those two a happy birthday. Uh, here today. 
Um, does anyone have anything relative to property standards they want to speak to uh, Mr. Green about? All right. By the way, is, is there a favorite little person on the agenda for later on today? Yes. yes. Okay, then I'm, I'm happy to wait till then. All right. Okay. Well, no, All right. thank you. I didn't see her here. That's why no, I asked. No, no, Look at me at next year. There's a <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Clark, did you have anything for us today? Oh, there she is in her Christmas one. Mr. Chair and Council, uh, I know that uh, Councilman Everson has some additional things to talk about in relationship to the master plan subcommittee, but I did want to share with you that we will be starting that committee up with full force uh, 2019. We won't be having a meeting in January because during the month of January, that will give the opportunities to the city council and the Carroll Parish Commission and the MPC board to appoint the new members to that uh, subcommittee. We hope that uh, you take the time out in January to appoint uh, very good, because all of you are very good, members to that subcommittee, because we have some truly progressive and aggressive ideas that we are hoping to achieve in 2019 going forward. Uh, just one of the things, uh, <coughs> as, I, as I speak before you, we have sort of allowed the uh, CAG, the Citizen Advisory Committee, to sort of go uh, AWOL. And that was very, uh, un that was very uh, unfortunate because that was the committee that was involved in, with citizens, giving us input in uh, the things that we needed to be doing for the master plan, ensuring that the master plan was properly updated, and ensuring that the master plan was being followed. Uh, and it was a wonderful organization. It had citizen participation from all the different neighborhoods, and some of you know of our initiative that we're proposing uh, in starting in 2019 of neighborhood planning and community planning. So all of these things will be forthcoming. I, I'll just uh, allow. And, and just as a reminder, Alan, I think it's so funny. That group actually disbanded because they were so happy with the progress. They were like, well, we're not doing anything anymore. But you know what? Over time, we still we need them, you know. <laughs> so, um, they, but they thought their job was done, and it was not done yet. <laughs> so, uh, it, it's a great thing to remind us of. Absolutely, um, and, and that job is just beginning because the best is yet to come for Shreveport. And if we think in that light and work in that light, Shreveport will become the city, and Cato will become the parish that we so hope they will. And I'd like to just say on behalf of the Metropolitan Planning Commission uh, to the mayor and to the city council, Merry Christmas. Those of you who are leaving, it has been our utmost pleasure working with you. I think I have grown as an individual because of you. Uh, you <coughs> challenged me on many times. And for that, I thank you so, so very much. And uh, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. I nominate James Flurry. <laughs> <laughs> He's on the committee now. He's a good, he's a, he could transfer some good knowledge. Council <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, 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 Council members have received their budget to actual financial report. Uh, please review that email. And if you have any questions, you have a very narrow window of opportunity to refer. <laughs> <a question. laughs> By the way, who is going to take over that role? I mean, that is a critical monthly <laughs> task. I think they got somebody in mind. I'm not okay. for sure. But I will say, Mr. Chairman, that uh, we have to commend uh, Councilman Corbin for his uh, commitment and dedication for chairing that committee. I mean, he, he was on it the whole four years, and we appreciate your, uh, your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. As well as um, Ms. Lennis Stewart. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Mr. Thompson, is there any uh, legislation to be had today? No, sir, not today. All right. No public hearing. And there is no public hearing also. Okay. Well, we have the final request to speak. Uh, yes. A familiar face, Mr. John Settle, oh, please. Same as me. Well, he's not here today. <laughs> he's, he's taking the same as place. 
try and settle for Tealwood. I, I wanted to address you all on two topics, if I could. They're both you on the. You can, but our policy has been three minutes. Okay. Three minutes to get them both in. So. All right. First of all, I referred the CAFA ladies to the eighth floor to talk to either Randy Lucky or Erica Bryant uh, about their program. Having been on the Board of Directors of Neighborhood Housing Service, which some of you may remember, and probably before some of you times, I am interested in housing. Uh, one on the uh, Ordinance 79, the uh, Lake Street Crossing, uh, as we were informed last meeting, there's been a 90-day letter of intent that had to go to the feds and for comments, and the City Engineers Department was working very hard to get additional information. So. I hope that you will pass that until next year. I know it's something that needs to be dealt with, but I've been working the, with the owners of that and kind of coordinating it, but it is on track as far as I think the city, the feds, the new owners are aware they have, an, the owners are aware they have an obligation to the city. They made that pledge. And if it were to transfer ownership, that that would also be incumbent upon their buyers. On resolution 142, I, I guess I'd been asleep at the wheel, uh, but it looks like we're kind of playing Santa Claus on the last um, meeting of the year. I have a major, major, major objection to you funding the Intercity Entrepreneurial Association, or Inc. And it's very simple. That organization has refused to comply with the Public Records Act. It receives public dollars. But unfortunately, uh, I litigated that case and I lost that in Caddo District Court. I've litigated several public records cases and that's the only one I've lost. <clears throat> but I disagree in, vehemently with any funding of any nonprofit that will not agree to in writing to be subject to the Public Records Act. Just very simple. The only information that's public about this organization that I could find is a 2015 tax return. 2015 tax return. The resource that I sent to has tax returns of nonprofits. This showed that they had $18,000 in savings. It's bad policy, pure and simple, to fund public dollars to any entity that will not agree to the Public <coughs> Records Act. That also applies to the Independence Bowl, but that's another issue. I've lost that one too, but I vehemently object to that ten thousand uh, dollars. I have to leave early today, so I won't say how you vote. But please do not fund this organization. Thank you. Okay, uh, those are our public comments on agenda items. Okay. I had um, did that on Miss Graham? Miss I had Lennis. Is that up, Miss Lennis? Were you on the speech? <coughs> okay. Councilwoman she, Lynch. She was so enthusiastic to be recognized by, by Bradford over here. She wanted to say that. I'm sorry? I had a question for Mr. Settle. I'm sorry. Walked off so fast. Did we need to Did call he him leave? back? Yeah, he's there. He's there. Oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, know. I don't know if this is the right time for that. Mr. Settle? My problem. You come back to, can you come up back to the podium, please? Yes, I'm sorry. I, I, I was called sick of by Mr. Burrell, and I was trying to see how I was going to deal with that. Yes, how can I help you? Councilwoman Lynch. Well, you've been called nicer things, I'm sure. I <laughs> have been. You're right. Yes, ma'am. How can I help you? <laughs> my apology. I guess my question is, um, I guess, well, I have two. I have a question and a concern. One is that the the matter that you referred to in terms of the uh, public records request, yes, ma'am, has been litigated. We're not litigating that today before the council. It's been litigated in court. Correct. Okay. And uh, according to you, I didn't keep up with it. Is that that matter was resolved by the courts when you say you lost? I lost. Yeah. Okay. I did. So it so the, the the issue of whether. Uh, of the public records request uh, has been settled legally from the court's perspective. For this, okay. for this organization on a very limited ruling basis, yes. Okay. Um, and additionally, you talked about the uh, Independence Bowl, kind of a similar situation. 
Was that, did you litigate that one as well? No, and I, I'll retract that statement on the Bowl. I okay. have requested information before, but it was not litigated. The, the only one I litigated was against ICE. Okay, all right, so that's what I want to be clear on. Okay, thank you. Those, those are all public comments. Okay. We have no executive appointments today. No items. Mr. Mr. Thompson, can we consider with items to be adopted, please? Uh, on the uh, consent agenda, we have three items, 138, 139, and 140. A motion to adopt the consent agenda is in order. Motion to adopt the consent Second. agenda. Second. Motion by Councilman Corbin. Second by the Vice Chair Jenkins. If there's any discussion. If there isn't, not any, please vote. Motion carries with seven. Uh, Mr. Seven. Chair, quick question. Yes, sir. Sh Shelly, is Shelly in here? No, sir. Yes, she is, is somebody representing Spar in here? Mm. I do not see anyone. I know she's. I know she's on vacation. Yeah. She may so be. I, I just didn't know if somebody fair. else was. So if Wait, and maybe Sharika, somebody from the administration, at okay. some point, can I? I'd love to know, in terms of what the bids were and what the budget were for 138 that's the one that we're rejecting and I obviously I'm not debating whether it should have been or not I'm just curious to know what the scope of the pro what the original estimate for the project was and then how far apart those bids were okay 138 okay why don't we get uh, the information for you you send it to me an email we will do it me. it's no it's okay not a, all right we'll yeah. get those to you okay thank you Continue with regular agenda legislation, Mr. Thompson. Uh, the first is Resolution 136, declaring city-owned former fire station 17, located at 2890 Southland Drive, to be surplus property. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Councilwoman Lynch and seconded by Councilman Everson. If there's no, no discussion, please vote. Motion carried with seven. Mr. Thompson. Resolution 141 amends the master plan titled Great Expectations. Shreveport Cattle 20. Second. It's been moved by Councilman Everson and second by Councilman Corbin. 141. Did, just a quick Did anyone discussion. need additional discussion? Yeah, I, I, I just want to make sure that when I read it, it is to include that. It's just simply in an appendix to it that there's no substantive change into the body of the document. Correct. It's just adding it in, you know, this is a thing that really wasn't um, initiated by the, by the city. It was initiated by some of the other governmental partners. Um, you know, the city plays a role in it, but it, it's more than just the city. Um, but it's to be added to the plan. As the plan is amended and updated over time, it will be a helpful reference point. So that's okay. helpful. But I just, I didn't see that it changed any of the baseline document. Correct. And I just wanted to make sure that there was no Okay. Everybody vote. Motion carries with seven. Mr. Thompson. Resolution 142 allocates funds to specific not for profit organizations. So for moved. Funds budgeted second. in other charges. Moved by Councilman Everson and second by Councilwoman Lynch. Uh, Councilman Bradford. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, for four years, <clears throat> this uh, process has been that the Riverfront B4 committee would uh, receive the applications, review them, uh, evaluate those that applied, and then make recommendations to the full council. Before, before I jump to any conclusions, I would like to ask Councilman uh, Epperson what, what what made you want to? Uh, the fact that um, I created this process back in 2012 okay. and have overseen it, um, you know, the, the newer process of reviewing it. Um, previous to that, the administration had just made their recommendations in the budget, and we adopted it in the budget year. So um, in 2012, we did it the new way. In 2013, the administration, if I recall, just kind of did it, the, or maybe it was 2014. Um, so then the, the year after that, we went back to it. Um, and so we have done this sort of the same system for the last few years. It's not the way it's always been done. I thought it would be 
um, less of a burden on an incoming new council, new mayor, and everybody to have, you know, because this is a process that has to happen very early in the year. These applications are due in October, and, you know, the deliberations of them happen during the budget time when we pass exactly how much money will be allocated, you know, is available for allocation. Um, so I thought that it would be, um, you know, helpful to an incoming group of, uh, you know, a lot of new incoming people um, to kind of have to not worry about this immediately. Um, I'm open to changes or modifications. I also do think there's a few things that are time sensitive here. Um, there's a few things that, uh, you know, we just didn't have as many applications was another reason. Um, there just weren't as many applications that have been in the past, so they were a little bit more focused. And I thought it would be helpful. So um, that's why I'm offering this. But like I say, I'm open to. Okay. Well, again, you know, and I, I respect your, 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 your response, but uh, there were 15 or 16 that, uh, that applied. Uh, and that the ones that was chosen uh, that you recommended as, as the chair, of the outgoing chair, uh, may, may or may not. Uh, be warranted assistance only only because I think that that we we try to within the process over the last few years the process and having uh, those uh, entities to come before us and to uh, uh, make their presentation on why they feel like they are deserving and we 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 took everything they said into consideration and some and oftentimes we would we would uh, reconsider our initial. Uh, thoughts into into giving them consideration. I think that we are at a point to where, and I think uh, I think the I think the I think the incoming council members uh, would be would be would be would, would have the ability to 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 to, to uh, you know to make these uh, make these considerations as we have. I was thinking, and somebody could correct me if, if I'm wrong. I know we passed the budget at our last meeting, and we allocated through, through the uh, through the process 150,000 for civic appropriation applications. Uh, and I, I thought it was kind of kind of interesting that we would uh, administer funds that was being allocated for the 19 for the 2019 budget cycle. It just seemed like to me that that would be a responsibility of the new council. So I think, Mr. Mr. Everson, that that we should we should give. Uh, and, and, and I've heard since since, and I didn't get a chance to look at this until this morning. I've heard other recommendations that other others on the list should be should be even considered. I don't know. We, we don't have time to debate that. So I just feel like we should refer this back to the. Um, the front before committee at, through the new council, let them review all the applications and make those make those recommendations uh, instead of us trying to uh, do the ones that are that are listed on the uh, on this proposal. I just feel I just feel that way. So, uh, I'm going to ask that we oppose this. Okay. okay. The the button didn't work for Councilman uh, Fleury and for Councilwoman Lynch, so. I'm sorry? Uh, no, I was trying to get them on to speak, but I just want to make sure, let them know I recognize them. Okay. Councilman Jenkins. Okay, hey, um, and I, I recognize there's, <coughs> I see definitely both sides of this issue in the sense that clearly Jeff has been involved with this for eight years and done a great job kind of moving it in the direction of how we've gotten here today. So I, I, with some significant resistance at some period during our eight years. So let me make that. It hasn't been significant resistance recently, but there were some times this was a very contentious issue. So I, I certainly see his perspective, and I, I don't necessarily, I can't say that I disagree with what, what uh, Willie is offering either. Um, you know, it occurs to me a couple things. There's one item on here that does not, I believe this is a list of the applicants that fit. There's one on here that 
does not show that they applied maybe under a different and yeah. I'm not necessarily saying this is the forum to go through the <coughs> line by line and then I do know another organization that that we have funded in the past specifically because they provided a resource for us in terms of a phone number for social services remember this whole discussion that is not in this list mm -hmm. right and I don't know if the parish is funding them and I don't want to lose that system and maybe another organization was competing and so that's all this to say that I'm not sure I'm in the best position right at this moment to vote on it though I see sensitivities to both sides and you know if I was going to offer a substitute motion the one that I do believe that we have uh, sort of taken on the responsibility of is the pumping station over the last two years just collectively of how we got there both through the administration and the problems they had so if somebody was going to offer a substitute motion I would put forth that as the one item at your funding level that you propose in your deal and exclude the rest and let the rest of them hash it out. I just throw that out for discussion and that's where I I'd I'm be at. open to that type of a um, like I say the intent of this is kind of I mean this is a process where you have a lot of people coming at you everybody wants this pool of money has gotten smaller there's gonna be a lot of people coming at you for attention at the beginning of the year I thought it might be easy to kind of come in with a fresh start and not having everybody sort of grabbing at you for a few small dollars here and there um, but you know I am perfectly open to letting this process play out in the new administration I mean it's it's doesn't make a difference to me I, I would agree that um, that the pumping station is sort of unique in that if it isn't funded at some level mm, there's a high level of probability that that could create an additional cost to the city um, in terms of maintenance um, so um, so certainly don't 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 disagree with the sentiments you've expressed. I mean that's the one that to me and and, if I was and also pull one out, also don't um, I do not argue the merits of um, you know people who may have been left out. You know uh, again it's a it's kind of an attempt to in reviewing the applications cover as much as possible to cover with the amount of money that was available. Of course that's what it is every year and um, it's certainly open to additional discussion as to what resources could be available or, or additional resources being made available to cover additional needs okay. Councilwoman, in, in the next year is what I mean I like, if you don't mind if Councilman Flurry would go okay. first so I can get my thoughts together Councilman Flurry thank you Councilman uh, Mr. Chairman uh, I too want to thank Councilman Everson for the four years that I've been here to see his work in it and it's be significant what he has done there and what I'm prepared to offer is a substitute motion of cattle council at the amount that he has placed there of 10,000 McNeil Street pumping station 25,000 and cohab of 25,000 cohab has helped create jobs as, as I'm very familiar cattle council <clears throat> I see the hungry faces once a month the elderly people in this city. We cut that from 50,000, I believe, when I came on the council, now to 10,000. And uh, it hurt when we had to do that. And if that would be acceptable, I would like to offer uh, that substitute motion at the appropriate time, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm not sure what changed. Uh, we have to have it in writing, so if you could tell us which ones to scratch through. Well, I got it in writing right here. I know they meant in your writing. <laughs> <laughs> Let me be, I had it right there. Question, question, uh, Councilman. I, I want to, I want to be clear. Uh, now, is, is your, is your substitute motion similar to what Councilman? It, it is similar. Is that we would act on those three, those three and eliminate and the, the rest? The other new council will have opportunity to come back and look at the list here that has been presented. And make take action okay. on that. But those three right there, I would like to see us approved today. Can you repeat those three? For me? Yes, uh, cattle council on aging of ten thousand dollars. Okay. McNeil Street yes. Pumping Station Preservation, Preservation Society, Society twenty five thousand. Okay. And Cohab Foundation of twenty five thousand. 
And your, and your rationale is what, Mr. Mr. Those, those uh, cattle counseling is, is something we've done every time. We're familiar with that. We know what that does. It feeds the hungry. And, and the McNeil Station, we're committed as a city to that project. And then Cohab Foundation is a job for, uh, creator. creator. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, amendment, was that, was that second? No. no. Not yet. No. I'm, if we can get through this discussion, then I think we can come back and make some decisions. That's what we're doing, going through discussion right now. Councilwoman Lynch. Wait a minute. Well, you, there's wait, a motion wait a minute. on Do the you have floor. a motion? Oh, yeah. uh, motion accepted as a as in. Okay, I, I'm happy to second that motion and then open that up for discussion. If that's okay, if that's along, that's fine. All right. It's been moved by Councilman Fleury and seconded by Vice Chair Jenkins. Uh, substitute motion. Uh, discussion. Now. Well, yes. and we'll vote after. Okay, so there's the sub two motion is that we would only approve there's three. The three. Allowed. Yeah, there's discussion allowed. But there's discussion. I'm sorry? Yes. Yeah, so on the three. On the sub two motion. On the sub two motion. Yes. Councilwoman Lynch is still right. able to discuss. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. Now. Yeah, we're we on the sub two motion right. discussion. Mm -hmm. Do you want to speak? Yeah, I'm on the board to speak. She so don't want to speak now. Okay. Um. I, w I was asking for a little extra time because every now and then when this council starts to do weird things, I have to make sure Shaniquia uh, is in check. Shaniqua, who's that? You don't want to know her. <laughs> um, and I have to uh, kind of try to watch my language because not only are we rewriting the rules as we go, and of course we've not followed the written and council passed rules probably the last four years, but certainly what is being proposed today is different in, any, in every capacity than what we've done the last three years. Um, and so that's my first concern. We have not just, you know, uh, handshake rules. These rules are written, the process, and it was passed by the council. So we're in effect, you know, just throwing that out the window. The other concern I have is that even if you're inclined to do that, we're cherry picking out of these groups. We have 17 applications. At least more than half of them we funded before. We even funded them last year. So it's not an, if we're going to debate the merits of, well, this group does this and this group does this and this group does this, we can say that for half of the groups that probably really for all of the ones that are in Councilman Everton's uh, resolution because we funded them before. Uh, even last year, we funded them. Um, and if we thought that the services they were providing were valuable and vital last year, I, I don't see where anything has changed. So, you know, I'm not really for cherry picking certain organizations and leaving everybody else hanging. Um, the process, I never really agreed, even though I understand it was a process that was passed by a prior council. But these organizations, all of them, it would be better if they knew what their funding was from the city prior to the beginning of the year. Um, you know, we have at times not made that decision until March or April or May and even June, as late as June uh, in the past. And folks are kind of left trying to provide services to our citizens beginning in January and not really knowing if they're going to receive their city uh, funding until later in the year. So I don't really necessarily have an issue with it being in December. Um, but what I do uh, have an issue with is cherry picking certain organizations <coughs> and leaving everybody else hanging because their needs uh, the three that you named, Councilman uh, Flurry, are no different than the other 
uh, seven or eight that are listed. Um, and so, I guess maybe I may come back and do something different on that, but uh, it, I don't really want to debate the uh, merits of some. I know there's one on here that came and said, you know, if you help us, if you help us, this is all we need. It's a one time and, you know, we won't be back. And here they are back. Um, and it's hard to get people off the government's titty. Once they get on it, it is, it is difficult <laughs> uh, to get them off. Um, and so, you know, you can, you know, put lipstick on a pig all day, but at the end of the day, I don't see, because each one of these organizations is providing something different for our citizens, and I think they're all vital and valuable, and I would like to commend uh, Councilman Everson for culling through uh, these, but I don't think I saw one, and you can correct me, that you have listed that we have not funded before. I believe you're correct. Okay. And so, you know, this is not rocket science, and I don't think we should make it more difficult than what it, than what it is, and I would just recommend that we uh, go with the list that has been presented, not cherry pick, give each one of these organizations the same consideration um, as being as having made the list and not cherry pick from the list certain ones. Um, thank you. Okay. Councilman Braffa. Mr. Chairman, for the record, I need to let the record show that the total amount that was requ that was requested from those that applied was one million two hundred eighty-three thousand dollars. One million two hundred eighty-three thousand dollars. The amount of funds available to be uh, distributed to these nonprofits is one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. One hundred and fifty thousand dollars available, $1,283,000 requested. The process has been that we would uh, allow those applicants to come before the committee and make their case on why they deserved funding. That, that, that part of the process has been eliminated. The, the new applicants may have The, 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 the whereabouts to make a case for themselves, which they are not given that opportunity. I think, I think we all agree that the, that the three that was recommended is, is deserving. Uh, and, and, I, and I see on this podium the old council, and I see the new council. They all, we're all here. We're all here, and we hear the conversation, and I just believe that we have the ability With the information that we will receive, we have the ability to make the prudent decisions on who we feel is worthy of funding for this for the next uh, fiscal year. I just I just believe the incoming council members have the ability as as we work through committee and we work through the process that we would make the right decisions on how we should allow $150,000 to be distributed to those that apply. I just believe we have that ability. And cherry picking, I mean, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we have 15 or 16 on here, and somebody would not even have the opportunity to say, consider me, consider me, because we would have made these decisions, even though, even though, the clerk made it clear at our last budget session that the new upcoming council could reject or, or whatever, whatever we do here today. So I think if it's in that preview, I think we should, I think we should let them make the decision. I just, I just believe that if the fair thing to do is to allow the new council to evaluate each individual applicant and and make and make the decision. I think I think I think we 
I think, I think they can do that. I think we can do that. So I'm just asking again that we would uh, uh, vote no and let, and let the process move forward. And if the, if the, if the new council and the new chair of the, of the uh, Riverfront B4 committee choose to alter and, and amend the way the process has been carried out, I think that again would be the responsibility of the new council. I've got confidence and faith that uh, that uh, that this city and this council could could move in the in the in the in the right in the right way in making these type of decisions. One hundred fifty thousand ain't a whole lot of funds. Hundred, I mean one million two hundred eighty three thousand dollar requested. Somehow we're gonna have to we're gonna have to communicate to the city and to the nonprofit. We're gonna have to create some 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 avenue to, 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 to create more funding and if we want to uh, encourage our nonprofits to to do what they do or we have to communicate to them that we just we just can't we just can't do what you're requesting and that we may put limitations on how many times how many years your funding would be available from the city I think I think it's everybody should have a chance of, of doing their work and nobody should should uh, I think you said something about latching on to something. I don't think that's, that's, uh, thank I mean, if they're worthy, that. Thank if they're for not revisiting yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just saying, I think it's worthy that some, some may be worthy of continual consideration, but I think that some may not. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm, 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 I'm just going to ask again that we refer this to the, to the new council. Okay. Uh, I don't know if, if that was a, Councilwoman Lynch or Councilman Bradford had a substitute to the substitute motion, but Councilwoman Lynch is on to speak again. Okay. I want to make a um, substitute motion to uh, refer the these to the B4 Riverfront Committee Council of the Council. Okay. Refer this this legislation. Yes. I second that motion. Okay. Councilman Corbin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I understand both the intent and, and the argument here, 100%. You know, I'm looking over the list of funding requests, and, and I see funding requests from $15,000 to $750,000. And take, take that, I guess, as, as it will. For eight years, I, <laughs> I've heard the same argument this time of year that we have a number of organizations who are continually coming to the city, the parish commission, sometimes NIP, asking for funding, and they don't go away. The thing that has changed is the amount of money that we can allocate to this, and, and we're down to 150,000. And, you know, I, I, I agree with, with what Councilwoman Lynch said it, it seems that if we're going on the on the premise that these organizations can't operate without city funding maybe they should rethink their mission my larger concern and I and I toss this to the new council because I think I see where this is going to land is every dollar in the riverfront fund is allocated there is no reserve, and it's all based on projected revenues from the uh, from the votes, which has seen a decline in the past few years. So there may be there maybe needs to be discussion in 2019 about reserving some of this, even, and and not spending every dollar until you're a little bit further along in the process and we see what riverboat revenues are doing um, at, at some point the city is is going to have to address nonprofit appropriations we prior council passed some rules and we didn't really stick with with them uh, for a number of reasons um, but it's it is a tough decision many of these organizations do good things but 
we can't continue to be the provider of the majority of their funds. And that's just my opinion, and I've said something similar many of the, many of the past eight years, but my concern right now simply is we have a, we have a fund in our budget that's 100% allocated, and we have no idea what those revenues are going to be. You know, hopefully riverboat revenues are going to increase and there'll be extra money in the account. But, but we won't know that till a year from now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Speak on my motion. Yes, ma'am. Speak on my motion. Um, I'll, well, two things I want to clarify. One, we do have people on this list because I was looking at the Guide Star, uh, the 990s, from uh, which is the form that nonprofits have to file with the IRS. And there are some entities on this list that already have multi-million dollar budgets already. And so, you know, you have some where, you know, it may be seeming that they're basically existing off government grants. And then you have others that are already have multi-million dollar budgets that are still asking for government money. And so, you know, we, we have it from both ends. Do they really need it? Or is it just that they know it's there or they have the political relationships that they can get a little extra uh, from the city? The other thing I want to clarify, uh, Councilman Bradford, is that this leaves a little bit in there for consideration of additional groups as well as if, you know, the uh, new council would like to uh, further vet the, the uh, entities that are not in uh, Councilman Re um, Everson's resolution, you know, that certainly is something that the council can take up. And, um, and certainly, I guess, if additional monies uh, need to be allocated or if you all want to allocate them, you just got to find some more money <laughs> somewhere. Uh, but that it can be, it can be done. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. I think we have Councilman Everson uh, on. Thank you. Um, and now, look, I realize this is a little bit different um, than it's been the last three years, but it's not at all different than the way it was done mostly before that. Like, I mean, these were in a lot of the budgets, like during the Glover administration, you know, that that it, this was kind of how it was always done. So I apologize if maybe I didn't think this was as drastic a thing as, as, as it may seem to some because it, it had been the standard practice before. Um, but, uh, but, you know, one of the, th I tend to agree with several of the things that have been said, but maybe, maybe in a different way. I mean, one of the things I think, so yes, it's casino revenue that um, is unpredictable. Um, I'm less concerned about $150,000 that may go to these various organizations that address needs in our community than I am with the large amount of money that we transfer into the general fund from there. Because, I mean, you're talking about millions of dollars versus $150,000. So, I mean, it's that's a big, you know, like, it, it is an area of concern, but I don't know that $10,000 in, in this account is going to make a big difference when we're still standing on millions of dollars in our operating fund that we, you know, and that, that's been a practice since the creation of this fund back in the um, early 90s. So, I mean, that's nothing unusual that happens, but it is a concern that we should continually look at during the budget process. Um, acknowledging that, I, you know, I also, I hear what Councilman Bradford said, but I guess I have, a, a, in terms of, um, you know, we talked last time about what, you know, the, the new incoming council and incoming administration have the ability to make budget amendments. So I kind of feel like, I mean, we, I mean, to me, I suppose I think these, I, but, but I've had the luxury of kind of looking at this and having seen these applications year after year. And I mean, and, and I acknowledge I may have a different perspective because I've done that. Um, but, um, but it seems to me like, why wouldn't we, go, I mean, these are pretty well-worn we get results, we know they cooperate, we know they do the, the things they say they're going to do. Um, it's not a tremendous amount of money. Um, and if the next council really disagrees with something that we passed today, they can undo it, um, you know, but, but so I'm open, I, I kind of would, I would, I get the feeling that there's, there's a few people who just want to send it to another committee. 
there's a few people who want to pull a few things out and um, I'm not sure how either of those votes are going to go um, but I would Im I would imagine if the one to pull a few things out goes through there'll be a vote either way on that I don't know if any of them have the final votes to pass one way or the other. So I guess I'm sort of more in the line of, let's just go ahead and vote. I know we might all see this a little differently. It's not gonna end the world for anybody one way or the other. Um, I don't wanna hurry along a vote if somebody has more constructive things to add to it, but, um, but I do think that these are, I would vote for the passage of this. I authored it, I read these things. I think they're, they're good uses of city funds. Um, I feel good about it. I understand if different people have a different point of view, but um, but I'd be glad to move forward if everybody else is ready. <laughs> okay. Attorney Bradford, can you call, tell what's on the table, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, before the council, there is a motion that's properly been seconded to substitute motions in progressive order. Uh, the proper procedure would be to vote on the last set substitute motion, which was offered by Councilwoman Lynch and seconded by Councilman Bradford to refer to the B4 Riverfront Fund. As with any substitute motion, the successful passage of a substitute motion disposes of the two prior motions. So you'll need to take them in order of the substitute motion to revert to the B B4 Riverfront Fund. If that motion fails, you will then take up the substitute motion to um, fund only the CCA, the McNeil Street Pumping Station, and Cohab offered by Councilman Fleury and seconded by Councilman Jenkins. And if that motion fails, then you will take up the original motion offered by Councilman Everson and seconded by Councilwoman Lynch. Okay. And by the way, if none of those pass, then it goes away. That's correct. Correct. The motion fails. I mean, the funding none of those pass, then correct. this item on the agenda, because it's the end of the year, essentially it does the same thing correct. as the first. Correct. Okay. Just because, I mean, that is a fourth eventuality that mm -hmm. in this case could easily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if, well, if you didn't pass the original, then it it doesn't move any of those allocations. Correct. Anyway. There's no allocation. So that's made. what I'm saying. That's right. what I mm -hmm. get. If Amendment Number Two passes, uh, I believe that it goes off of the agenda. It would go to the committee, but it would not be on the next agenda. They okay. would bring their own. Correct. Correct. Okay. Right. Yeah. The legislation would fall, but it would go to the right. refer to the before Right. Okay. All right. So use. let's call for the for the vote. You're voting on the second substitute on the motion. Second substitute motion to refer to the to refer to the before. Before. Correct. Okay. That motion fails. So now you'll take a vote on the second substitute motion by Councilman Fleury which is to fund the uh, CCA McNeil Street pumping station in the cohab. And to strike all of the others. Correct. Please the vote. I mean, oh, shit. That motion passes. Wait, Council Slow, how did you go back? Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You just said the motion, you're not putting it. This was to fund the three. It don't matter. It doesn't change. It, it would matter. fail either way. Three, uh, it's going to pass. Four. The motion passed. I mean, yeah. The motion yeah. passes is 5-3. 5-2, I'm, I'm, so I'm sorry. So moved as amended. No, it's a substitute That's motion. It's oh, not amended. It's complete. Not okay, amended. So it's not amended. Yes. Okay, that is the motion. Okay, that is the motion. It's amended. For the record, Mr. Bowman, your uh, vote the was yes. Five. Yeah. I'm sorry? It was 5-2. Okay. All right. All right, And that disposes of the original motion. Right. Okay. So just as a recap, what's the total amount that has been allocated? 60,000. 60,000. 60, 60, 60, 60, right. So, so it, it, in, in light of that, I mean, I would just say as outgoing person who's chaired it, um, that does leave 90,000 that these remaining applications are gonna, gonna wanna have discussed pretty early on in the year. So y'all go ahead and schedule something, get people on that committee, get them copies of these applications, get them to read them and get them, and that should probably be done in the first couple weeks of the new year. So. Right. Ms. Tom? Uh, we, <clears throat> we're now in the introduction of resolutions. There are none. Introduction of ordinances not to be adopted prior to January the 8th. Um, ordinance number 130 of Manson Metropolitan Planning Commission's fee schedule for the City of Shreveport for the Unified Development Code relative to fees for applications related to properties within historic preservation overlay districts and for applications related to preliminary site plan and other wise provide with respect there to uh, 
Ordinance 131 will revise Chapter 105, Wireless Telecommunications Facilities of the City of Shreveport. Uh, if the attachment was not there, you can refresh and it will be there. Ordinance 132 is a zoning matter case number C-84-18. It, it, it amends the official zoning map of the City of Shreveport Unified Development Code by rezoning property located on the north side of Buncombe Road, approximately 200 feet west of Roosevelt Drive, uh, from R17 Single Family Residential District to RA Rural Agricultural District. Uh, the next is Ordinance 133. It's a zoning matter, C-86-18. It uh, rezones property located on the west side of Broad Acres Road, approximately 280 feet west of west south of Westport Avenue, from I-1 Light Industrial District to R-17 Single Family Residential District. Ordinance 134 is a zoning matter, case number C-87-18. It amends, it uh, rezones property located on the south side of Shreve Park Drive, approximately 150 feet east of Buncombe Road, from R-17 Single Family Residential District to C-1 Neighborhood Commercial District. And Ordinance 135 is a zoning case number C-89-18. It rezones property located at 6815 West 70th Street from I-2 Heavy Industrial District to I-1 Light Industrial District. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, um, as you know, all items fall off the agenda unless there is a specific, uh, unless it's specifically stated that they will be placed on the next agenda. So we would recommend that uh, these items be introduced and placed on the next regular agenda. So moved. So second. second. Been moved by Councilwoman Lynch and second by the chair. If there's no discussion, please vote. That motion carries with seven. Ms. Thompson. We now the ordinances on second reading and final passage. Ordinance seven and nine. Uh, notifies Union Pacific and other interested parties that the city engineer and director of public works through the office of the mayor are authorized to begin the process to reopen vehicular access to Lake Street. I'd like to move to postpone this to February 12th, which is the first council meeting in February. Um, no second. But we're also to place it on the agenda for the, for the next council. You need to place it on the agenda for the next council. For that council meeting, then they could they take it from so there. So yes. Yeah, so okay. so do I? What, how do how do I need to say that? Uh, <laughs> you, you move to place it on the agenda, the but meeting. to postpone it until the action on it until the. I move that. Um, no second. Yeah. That. <laughs> 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 yeah, it will be placed on the agenda. On the agenda for the next meeting. <coughs> it will okay. be acted on. Will not be acted on before. Please vote. What's the second meeting? We accept it. Did you get it, Steph? Oh, I'm sorry, Stephanie. We don't vote it. No, Stephanie. Oh, my thing is. The second meeting. Is it showing it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. What's Carol's seven? It's Thompson. The 26th. What, what was the date that <coughs> you wanted it acted on? The 26th. The 26th of January? February. 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 Okay. Okay. Second meeting in second February. Amendment. Okay. Second meeting. Second or first meeting? Second. I said, I said February 12th, which is the first. First, first meeting in February. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next is uh, that was uh, seven zero. Yes, sir. I believe. Well, ordinance one twenty two amends the twenty eighteen grant special revenue fund budget. Well, okay, with the amendment. amendment. One amendment. So moved. On the amendment. Second on the amendment. Yes. On the amendment. It's been moved by Councilman Corbin. Second by. Vice Chair Jenkins. And as a refresher, this all has to do with that end of year forecasting and revenue. That's right. Right. Okay. Motion carries with seven. So moved, yes, amended. <coughs> Second. 
Moved by Councilman Corbin and second by the Vice Chair. If there's no discussion, please vote. Motion carried with seven, so I mean, so. Ordinance one. Move. Okay. Ordinance 123 amends the 2018 general fund budget. I believe it has one amendment. So, so moved on the amendment. Second. We moved by Councilwoman Lynch and seconded by Councilman Everson <coughs> on the amendment. Please vote. Where's my thing? So moved as amended. Moved by seven. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought she had a second already. No. Moved by Councilwoman Lynch and second by Councilman Corbin. Please vote. As amended. Councilman Jenkins. Waiting on me. Yes, sir. Sorry. Motion carries with seven. Mr. Thompson. Ordinance 125 amends the 2018 Community Development Special Revenue Fund so budget with one amendment. On the amendment. Yeah. So moved by... Councilman Everson, was that a second councilwoman? Mm -hmm. Second by Councilwoman Lynch. Please vote. Mr. Carries with seven. So moved as amended. Second. Uh, <clears throat> we moved by Councilwoman Lynch and second by Councilman Everson. If there's no discussion, please vote. And motion carries with seven. Awesome. Ordinance 129, I believe it was postponed until January the 8th, but because of the way the rule reads, I would ask you to uh, postpone it again at this meeting so that we be sure to be in conformity with the rules. No, it's postponed. Oh, hold on a second. Why can't, if we voted on the other one, why couldn't we vote on this one? I mean, I, the other one has resolution 136 would seem to it's not noted that it's this lays over for advertisement to be advertised oh and we didn't meet the two we didn't because meet your, the, your days are short it's not the normal two i got you well, you see where i was at i was yeah. saying if you he was you asking for clarification he was not questioning you art <laughs> I am about to, I am about to question it though at the risk of peril, but that's on a previous <laughs> thing. So you're trying to get me in trouble with Mr. Jenkins. You <laughs> shouldn't do that. Yeah, okay. I just I'll just you know I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to argue. I will okay. second that. So the motion is to place it on the next agenda, the January first meeting in January. Yes. It's been moved by Councilman Flurry, second by Councilman Court. Please vote. Okay, let's stop. Okay, question, Mr. Thompson. Yes, sir. Can you tell me the difference between the amendment of Ordinance 122 and the original ordinance? Uh, they were technical amendments, I believe. The amounts, I don't think, changed. The I'm amounts not did not it. change. That's why I'm asking. But it, they were technical amendments. Uh, there was a question about the way it was formulated. So that was changed. Okay. Uh, once again, not going to argue with that one either, but that one okay. seemed to look the same. So. Mr. Chairman, I believe all, those are all of the items on the regular agenda. We're now on the table legislation. Unless there's a specific motion, these items will be dropped from the agenda and will not appear on the next agenda. I don't think you have any objections with that. <laughs> uh, Mr. Green, I think we have one property standards uh, to consider today. All right. James almost went up there when you said I know, Mr. I had Green. to catch myself. <laughs> <laughs> we had two Jenkins for four years up here, and that made it. Yeah. And there somebody said Councilman Jenkins. Two of us had three after that. Think about that from now on. Okay, our case today is 219 Columbia Street. Uh, uh, back. And Ms. Wood is here to speak on the property and to 
What were we supposed to get uh, considered today? I refresh my mind on that, please. We were supposed to receive some documentation from the last. Right. And did, has, has that been received? Okay. Or I guess that we're here to okay. get that. Okay. Go. Um, Darlene Wood, 219 Columbia Street. I have what you requested. I did only made three copies, so I didn't know how y'all wanted to distribute that. And then I would like to read something to you. Mr. Chairman, point of order. I, I would like to hear back from Mr. Green and in, 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 in what she's presenting is acceptable to the, to the Property Standards Committee to the property standard personnel. I mean, she given us information, but I want to know, does that, does it fit the information that we requested? Well, I mean, you requested it. We gave you our determination, which mm -hmm. was to go with, we recommended demolition. She was brought back by the council. Yes, right? but I asked that, did you review the information that she's disseminating? That's what I'm asking. Well, I'm reviewing it as, I got a text of it, so, but I have to let you guys look at this because the decision is now yours. Mm -hmm. Mary, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. That, 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 yes. that, the, that the administration worked on behalf of the, of the, of the, of the council. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And that I was hoping that, that we could get a, a review of what is being distributed so that we could uh, know that we are in we're in course with what you have with Absolutely. Is so let me let me ask the question a different way if you don't mind okay. councilman mr green during the last council meeting and of course we didn't have a chance to talk about this on uh, right. monday morning did um miss wood uh, bring the documentation and uh, that was asked by the council and if she brought the documentation, was there any movement or improvement toward getting this property to meet code? No, no, no improvements have been made. As far as the documentation, I mean, I have her, what she has is a letter of her intentions. So what it looks like we've been provided is a, a letter of, of what she intends to do. Mm -hmm. um, a what copy of a check to Jason Waddell or Waddle and a line of credit for $3,000 um, from Bocher Federal Credit Union. Okay. So those were the documents that Councilman Jenkins uh, asked that, that or told her that that would be helpful if she brought today. But um, from what I'm gathering here, then no no improvements were made since the last council meeting correct right since we met last and also here it says as i can only express my intentions i regret the length of time it has taken so may i read that leads me to believe that we have not done anything since um Absolutely. the last meeting am i correct okay yeah no, according no to, to stay i had councilwoman lynch on first to speak but let me, yeah i want my turn no i want you no it's good i just want to read that <laughs> i've got another copy here from the yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, down. I've really forgotten the, all what the details were okay so oh, oh, what we asked her to bring back um do we have that somewhere that we'll <laughs> that I can be clear on what we asked her? Was it you, Councilman Jenkins? Um, I, I will say I'm you, fairly clear the three things that I asked. Okay. For. Was, what okay. Number one was some level of proof that she had some funds available to undertake potential home and without scrutinizing this very closely, I believe that is what this is because it, it is as she described and that doesn't need to be necessarily so i appreciate that the other item of discussion was some formal documentation of discussions with not necessarily first pres but with the inter whatever the preservation yeah. society or whatever and some either proposal or deliberation on how they would 
undertake this type of transaction. Now, I don't believe we have any documentation of that. And then the third part was, if neither one of those were in place, then some kind of formalized contract with a contractor. Those were the three in the box, and one of those three I'm satisfied with globally based on that document. Thank you. Um, if I miss them, but I'm pretty sure that's high level where. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's what I want to clarify. Okay. You, you. So, so the question now is, Councilman, uh, is this where they're moving forward, or what, 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 is, what, is, your, what is your thought of it, what we received? <coughs> well, before I, uh, I mean, I have some strong opinions. Yeah. Of course, I, I was born with those. So <laughs> um, but I, I do, before I give that opinion, I'd like to at least hear her. I want to say that of the three comments or things that are requested, from my perspective, one of the three is fulfilled, at the least funding. in the spirit in which they were asked. The funding, the funding part. The funding part of you want to she mentioned she that. had taken out a loan and she could prove that she had to do some of the Let's repairs. hear her. So. Thank you. Um, as the requests were being given to me, I wrote them down, and one that you stated about wasn't even about the other the guy that with the restoration thing. That wasn't part of it. You told me a letter of intent, proof that I had retained a contractor, and then y'all also asked me had I made payment to him. And those were the three things that I brought. That was what was asked of me to bring. And I would like to read my oh, statement okay, just to you. So the letter of intent okay. is this discussion with the preservation society. But that's not the only option I have is, is not only them. Oh, okay, no, no, that's good. Okay. That's good. But that's the, th your third, our threes are the same. You're just phrasing them different. Okay. Um, I would like to address the whole council, ladies and gentlemen that are here. I'm giving you the only letter of con content, intent I myself can give fulfilling the council's request in from the last meeting of December the 10th of 2018. The requests were to bring a proof of retain of contractor to do the work on 219 any payment made from the said con to the said contractor, which there's a council check, and you will see at the top where it went through our bank statement, he cashed it right away, and to bring a letter in of intent. As I can only express my intentions, my intentions, I can't speak for the contractor. I can't, sp I can't speak on my <laughs> inability to see through people's intentions i can't i can't speak for that i regret the length that it's taken to get work done on 219. it has been a hard road for us to find someone within our budget i do ask for compassion and some benevolence on your part in granting me time to seek replacement of current hired contractor also to seek out any parties interested in buying the house and the property. Until that actually happens, request, requesting additional time for us to address some of the rehab on our own. This could help in getting to an end result that would make all happy and reach to what we were hoping for. I do not have to be upset and nor do you to be impatient or upset with me because it's in regards to the situations that I could not control myself. I couldn't, I can't make somebody do something. My intentions are to rehab as we are going through this time of seeking a dependable body to work on the house issues or possibly sell to someone that sees the benefit of saving this residence. Thank you for your time and your knowledge in regarding this matter. I also want to thank you in advance for the gift of time. 
I stop here because maybe I shouldn't have put that two weeks here and two weeks there. My Bible tells me not to retaliate or come back at anybody with anything, but I don't think a choppy two weeks of this and do two weeks of that is fair on trying to get what we need to do done. Allow me and my family to take time. We need to save the residents in honor of my mom in her memory. And I think that would do that if we are able to go ahead and save the home. I can see a young couple living in that house. It's not, it just looks bad on the top. It, it would be a great asset to leave that there, the home there. And um, where it's located is a good location, getting to any place in Shreveport. So a young family, a single person, that would be ideal for them to get to wherever they want to get to in Shreveport. So I'm asking for um, okay. more time okay. to seek out these things. Councilman I'd like to make a motion to uphold the decision of the property standards and move forward with demolition. Okay. Okay. And wait a second. Uh, uh, is there a second? I mean, I'm happy to oh, second right. that motion at this point, but I would like some more discussion. Uh, oh, absolutely. But I think no. having something on the record for the deliberation is important. Councilman Corbin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Ms. Wood, you know, we We've heard your comments multiple times now, and the story's not compelling me to change my mind. At the last meeting, you disclosed that you had not gone through secession and, and that the house was not in your name, so I'm not even sure if you can sell it. I do know that a legal person in the audience talked to you after the meeting and made an inference that that could quickly be done. It could be put in your name fairly quickly. Have you made any effort of getting this house in your name so that you can sell it? Well, having the money to retain an attorney, that's that's another little hiccup. Okay. But that's, you've answered but my, you've answered that's not, if I have to do that, I will. I just didn't realize how what, what what evidence do you have to show us today that that we are one centimeter closer to you having a reliable contractor and a contract, an estimate and the funds to repair this house and it not be a burden to those who live next door and across the street? I thought that's what I did today, bring you what I had. You showed, us, what, you showed us a $3,000 yeah. line of Because that's what I got quoted. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think that I was got to a take care of more, um, the problem. You know, I don't have to do the whole house, I was have been well, told. The problem, mm -hmm. I mean, the, you, you did show us a, a line of credit for an amount. You also showed us a canceled check, so that line of credit is, is down by the amount of that check, which leaves even less money to make these repairs. And you have you have one final chance to convince me, but I, I think I probably speak for everybody in the circle that your your time to show us some credible effort other than your intentions, and I appreciate your intentions. I I I understand that I feel for you in this, but there's another duty that we have, and it's to not let a dilapidated piece of real estate continue to linger because this has gone on now for years. So what can you offer anything else? I believe I could if I had more time. Okay. All right. Councilman Bradford. Mr. Jim, I think our actions over the last four years has is clear that we would rather maintain and rehab properties than to tear them down. I think we have, we have shown that, uh, that, uh, that position. But at the same time, <clears throat> in, in this situation, it's, 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 we're not communicating in some way because uh, Ms. Woods brought us a letter and it say, these are my intentions. Now her intentions would have been if she'd bought us 
a contract with a contractor saying, I am about to engage in the, re in the rehabilitation of this house. That's the intention that we, was, that we was anticipating. I don't know any, and I'm going by. But you told us that for three months. But I had one, so I thought. No, no, no. I'm just saying having, having a document, <coughs> a contract saying, I am contracting with Ms. Woods to rehab this house on Columbia Street. That he, was, that I don't know we, why he didn't do that. It was almost kind of like it was no, a no, gentleman's that's, that's agreement. Obligation. That's the obligation that your letter said I intend. I intend to do a lot of things, but it's, it's not in. If I believed not, the man that okay. was looking me in the eye was going to do what he said he was going to do. And so there was nothing drawn up. I believed him. I trusted him. He has proved me different, well, but I don't want okay. me to be penalized because of him. Okay. But thank you. I'm not going to, I mean, we're beyond that debate. So I want to ask this, the attorney uh, again. The motion, you heard the motion. Yes. Okay. What recourse do Ms. Woods have if this motion fails, she by, uh, uh, passes? Ms. Woods could appeal to the first judicial That's courts. Correct. And and that could overturn what we did here today. Yes, that potentially could overturn the ruling of this body. Can I Show see the house. house again? Can you put okay. it We tore the porch off down at the bottom to see the problem down there. That's why that looks the way it does. The top up there where the dormer is, is where the main problem comes from because of the water that hits it. And then eventually the porch covering made a V. It looks bad. And that's what got left from the man cutting the trees down that I paid him for. He didn't finish out. And so um, we've been trying to get over there to pick up some wood and get it out of the way. We'll have to do something else about the limbs. The wood was pretty easy to get to that. Okay, Miss Wood. Miss Wood. Yes, ma'am. Now, I, you know, I think the fellas up here have been kind of rough on you again. I do, you know. And because um, I've seen them talk to all types of people in the last four years, and you've been about the roughest. They've been on you rougher than anybody I've seen in four years. But, um, but I, I think you 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 need to let you got you need to let this go, okay? I mean that house is just it, the front. Everything I'm looking at, you know, and I mean. You know, I'm sure all of our houses probably need, you know, something done to it, okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, but, and I know it's it's probably difficult to let it go. Um, certainly, it would be better voluntarily, but sometimes, you know, um, you know, sometimes it happens involuntarily. <coughs> But I'm just looking at that house. It's going to take a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. And, you know, if I had it, I would give it to you, but I don't. Um, I just think it's time to, to let it go. I mean, that's just my personal opinion. I'm not talking as, I, you know, I, I just, it's just difficult to, um, if, if that house were next door to me, I would probably feel the same way as your neighbors, especially after this length of time, you know, has gone by. And it looks like the city is, is incapable of addressing it if we don't do something. And of course, this is not necessarily the end of the road because you do have other appeal rights but I just think um, it's going to, well, I'm just not going to be able to. Um, May I ask another question? Yeah. You say 30 days for, before it goes to 
judicial first. No, judicial. I didn't say that. I think no, that you, that you lawyer over there said. Okay, I have to file an appeal. <laughs> okay, to, file to, file an appeal. Right. To, the, to the first judicial district court. I have no that, idea that where your, that okay. is or how you do that. Okay, so in that 30 days. I cannot advise you of your, I can advise you of what the code provides, which is you have 30 days to appeal. I cannot, nor the body up here can advise you how to do that. You will need to speak with an attorney or someone who's familiar with that process that can guide you along. She will get a letter stating all this. Yeah. But well, it just says 30 days. It says 30 days to appeal. Okay. Quick question for you. I'm finished. Okay. Y'all talking on the woman. I'm going to call for the vote and y'all can give her the information. Okay, well, may, I, may I finish my question? Oh, one second. If the property is sold during that 30 day period, what happens with the appeal? The demolition order attaches to, to the, the property. new property, but then they could. They could take an appeal. They could take within an that 30 day time frame. But the sale of that property does not interrupt. That okay, days. that's what I, I wanted to. <coughs> I mean, I'm going to say this. I do think this is a good candidate for that program. I do too. I think that I don't either, either I'm worried that she doesn't understand really the ramifications of this vote, and this is a fleeting opportunity to include this house in that program. Though I do think if someone were to move, and I worry a little bit about the timing, it's not going to be the easiest two weeks to get something done of this nature. So that's my only concern at this point, but I'm, I, I'm uh, just really think your best course of action is to work hard on selling this property in the next 30 days and hope to because it's the spot in the court. it can resolve itself in court after the fact. But now, oh. keeping in mind, it is exclusive of legal holidays at 30 days. If that helps. Right. Gotcha. That's wrong. Come with a vote, please. And I'll say, uh, just, I appreciate, um, I think you said you were concerned that maybe she doesn't understand the, the severity of it. I guess I'm concerned and kind of disappointed that you do understand and that you've let it get but to this what point. Part, I mean, what part do you think I don't know? Or is I it don't. just make I, it I think clear? I think you know exactly what's been going on. Okay, let's vote. Let's, let's vote, vote, please. Don't say to the woman. I agree with your statement. What's the, what we, what's the, uh, the motion is to uphold, uphold the, 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 the proper standards. Uh, okay. standards. standards board, thank you, and to demolish, proceed with demolition. <coughs> You got a motion by Councilman Everson, a second by Councilman Jenkins. And motion carries with seven. Thank you, Mr. I do Mr. hope Chairman. there is a better resolution for it. It's just we can't be the ones to extend the time anymore. Thank you, Ms. Wood. Wait, I don't understand what you just said. I said, I do hope you're able to resolve it somehow. I hope okay. you're able to solve this. I, I would rather it not see it be demolished, but um, we just can't buy a time forever. We're going to move forward. Okay. Any other appeals, Mr. Thompson? No. You have one that will, uh, the 5231 Broadway, which is set for February 11th of 2019 pursuant to rule 1.1 uh, miss wood you make a motion to miss wood you're going to need to miss wood you're going to need to step down from the podium I'm sorry i move uh for the broadway property to be extended until the what day was that placed on the next uh the first council agenda in january that's a move second it's been moved by is it 5231 broadway yes sir 5231 broadway avenue oh uh, it's been moved by Councilman Bradford and second by Councilwoman Lynch. Postponed. Uh, if there's no discussion, please vote. Here, let's just keep it on the agenda for next year. Okay. That motion carries with seven. Are there any reports from officers, boards, or committee? 
thing on. Um, I guess this might be appropriate real quick. Um, I could do it in sort of closing statements, but I'll just briefly say, and I'll talk more about it in closing comments, but um, do you have copies for all of next year's council members of a um, master plan progress report um, that has some great information in it? Um, I'll say that during this time because it's relevant to the master plan committee. Um, and I hope that is a committee that, that has quick appointments there in the middle of doing some really good work. And so I hope that that continues um, and hope that this will be a helpful resource to ensure that. And uh, we'll discuss it more later on, but thanks. Okay. Any other council members? No reports, anything? No. All right. Additional communications from the mayor? No, thank you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you, Madam Mayor. And thank you for uh, the past four years of your service to this city. Thank you, sir. Um, any council member have any additional uh Communications. I have Councilman Bradford first. Mr. Chairman, before I give all my thank yous uh, to to various persons, rather, before I left home today, coming to this meeting, uh, I heard news reports, uh, and, and it was disturbing that the reports stated that the president was unwilling to sign a resolution to extend funding for government and that the shutdown was intimate uh, come Friday midnight. Oh, what have we come to as a, as a, as a, as a, as a country uh, that we will allow federal employees to be uh, without income during the Christmas week. Now, I, 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 just, I just said that because I was disturbed, but I, but I wanted to first commend our mayor, Mayor Ali Tyler, for her service. She came in at a time when uh, I felt the city needed her. And she presented a very bright uh, administration, you know, and I don't have to tell the councilman that was here that uh, the lonely nights of, of, uh, of, of, of council meetings, but Mayor, you, you brought uh, a level of uh, integrity and, and, and bright to this body, and I wanted to thank you, as well as the city. I think you're, you, initia you initiated your your, uh, your progress initiatives, yes, and you lived up to your pledge that every year you would give a progress report in writing to the, to the city. And uh, I can honestly say that uh, you, have, you have represented us with distinction, and I thank you for that. Uh, and then to the council members who are leaving, the great thing about this council is that we all bought me different personalities and experiences and uh, ideas and values. We, uh, my, uh, my boss at Willis Knighton always say, uh, if, I, if I have to do all the thinking, I don't need y'all. <laughs> so he wants, a, he wants a diversity of input. And, and everybody here about value. I mean, I mean the, the, the different, we, we didn't agree, and we don't supposed to agree, but, but we bought what we had from our life experience and from our perspective of the district that we represent. And, that what, and that's what I thought made this, this council fruitful. And I want to thank you all for that. We're going to miss you, all, th all three of you, all four of you, uh, I thought Mr. Epperson is a guru of, of information when it comes to <laughs> Mr. McGovern. He, he don't let no stone go unturned. Uh, Mr. Corbin, I mentioned earlier, dedicated. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, uh, numbers man who don't miss much can't get by. Uh, 
Can't get no numbers by him. And, uh, and my good friend, who, uh, who I'm going to really miss, Council Lady Lynch. She ain't going to be far. Say it again. She won't be far. You ain't got to miss her that much. I don't have to miss her that much. Nah. But see, but see, she was necessary. She's still she, necessary. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Uh, you don't have to be on the council to put somebody in their place when they need to be. Oh, you don't? <laughs> okay. <laughs> she can do that as a private okay. citizen. Well, thank you. I, I, I trust I, if I, I get out of line on Facebook, she may do that so as know, well. You knew what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but thank you all, and, and uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. And y'all come and see us sometime. We, I know we're going to be calling on you guys for some, uh, some advice and, and, and some, uh, some of your wisdom, because you, you guys served eight years with distinction, and and uh, and you helped us. I mean, you know, you helped you helped this this new council that came in. Uh, you allowed us to, you know, be who we are. And uh, the, the council staff, uh, all right, and the and the staff kept us, kept us, kept us program to do what we do and we, I want to thank you for that and, and, and attorney attorney Bradford uh, Stephanie just put some on the email I, I don't know what it meant but <laughs> I'll I, tell you what it but meant but I told you no no, I, I, no no I told you six months ago I said <laughs> he's a Bradford Bradford's gonna always land on his feet I told you that okay and he he, he I, I didn't I did not say he wasn't gonna do a good job as a councilman I mean, as a as a city attorney, okay. My statement was that I didn't I didn't feel at the time that uh, that his his involvement in city government was at the extent, but he did prove me wrong, and and he did a great job as as a city councilman, and I want to thank you for for your service to now this council. Keep calling him a city councilman. City, city attorney. attorney. City attorney. Yes. So you got me confused. Mm -mm, you was confused well, at I the think, beginning. I think, <laughs> I, I think that mayor, carries uh, on a good tradition of people being confused between <laughs> Willie Bradford and William Bradford <laughs> and who is I the city attorney and who is the city councilman. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah. I got it a that's lot. That's so understandable. But nevertheless, I, I, appreciate, I appreciate working uh, with everybody this, this, uh, this term and we're just going to uh, Hope and pray that uh, we can continue in the same vein in which we uh, we've served in the last last four years. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Right. Councilman Corbin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I guess we've we've reached that day, <laughs> and uh, I decided that I better put my comments on paper and read them. So I apologize for reading a lot of this, but I thought if I didn't put them down, I would either forget something, somebody, or get way off track. And uh, so here we go. Uh, I do want to say it's been an honor to represent the citizens of Shreveport and um, Council District D for the past eight years. Uh, somehow on a nice spring afternoon in 2010, while on a run with a bunch of friends, a conversation came up about Shreveport politics. And suddenly by the end of that run, I was a candidate for Shreveport City Council. I've had the good fortune to serve with two administrations, Mayor Glover and Mayor Tyler, along with 10 different city council members. Early on, Councilwoman Joyce Bowman took me under her wing prior to Inauguration Day, had me sit beside her, taught me how to use the electronics, showed me how the meetings worked, and called me often both to answer questions and let me know when I'd made a mistake. I'm forever <laughs> grateful for her assistance. Um, it's been an interesting journey for sure, a few issues. Uh, have taken a life of their own and dominated conversation for long periods of time. We've had third parties videotape city council meetings for months. We've had packed chambers for zoning votes. Seen street repair legislation appear on countless agendas in a row as if a majority of city council members were going to suddenly change their minds and vote yes. <laughs> a few topics that come to mind when looking back over the last eight years. Calvin Grigsby, Dog Park, LA 3132, UDC, sewer consent decree, I-49 inner city connector, property taxes, and maintenance of city buildings. I want to say a special thank you to Mr. Thompson and the council staff for answering my endless questions.
keeping me on track and providing assistance during my term as chairman. It's much appreciated. And also making sure that there's always a Diet Coke close by. <laughs> <coughs> I appreciate both Mayor Tyler and Mayor Glover allowing me to communicate directly with directors on issues and citizen complaints. I've done my best not to abuse this and believe it has allowed many issues to be quickly addressed. Many of the directors, especially Water and Sewer, Public Works, and SPAR, quickly learned my run schedule and anticipated emails listing problems I had noticed while traveling the city on foot. I have talked with Councilman-elect Butcher. He tells me he's not a runner, so I think you're going to get a break there. <laughs> to Mayor Council and, and her staff. I sincerely thank each of you for your respect, open conversation, and re responses to my request. Yours is not an easy job, and there are often arrows coming at you from many directions. Your dedication and professionalism is much appreciated. Mayor Tyler, while we may not have always agreed on every topic, I believe that each day over the past four years, your actions were intended for the good of our citizens and our city. Shreveport is a better place today because of your efforts. To my fellow council members, thank you for your respect, concern for our city, deliberation, and friendship. The areas we represent are vastly different and each has unique needs. Much, much of District D is new and shiny, while other districts are plagued with poor housing, crumbling infrastructure, and populations that face numerous challenges. Through many of, the, through many of these differences, we've been able to make positive changes for Shreveport. We've adopted the Shreveport Caddo 2030 Great Expectations Master Plan, a modern unified development code, and subsequently made changes to reflect input from developers and citizens. We've dedicated funding for street improvements, continually lowered city property taxes over the past eight years. Most, but not quite all, of the $175 million 2011 bond issue projects are either completed or underway. Thank you for your service and congratulations to Councilman Bowman, Bradford, and Flurry on their re-election to City Council. I'd be remiss and probably find that the doors wouldn't open when I get home if I did not say thank you to my spouse, Risha. She has graciously attended many events with a big smile on her face. She's endured after hours telephone calls, getting stopped in the grocery store, and sometimes getting stopped while we're out on a run. Uh, she quickly learned by default that she was the backup council person and had questions directed to her in my absence. Uh, she's been a great partner in this and I appreciate her more than she knows. Jewelry is probably in order quickly. <laughs> <laughs> to Mayor-elect Perkins and the incoming city council members, congratulations and good news. We left a few things for you to do. <laughs> Savor the next eight days and enjoy the high from your election. When you place your hand on the Bible and take the oath December 29th, you insti instantly become one of us, a dreaded politician. From that point forward, you will never encounter any citizen that did not vote for you, regardless of where they may reside. <laughs> You'll suddenly be popular because you can fix anything. Potholes, garbage not picked up, water leaks, grass cutting, abandoned houses, barking dogs. You can handle it. Work together, talk to each other, come to city council meetings prepared, and call on staff to explain legislation that, that you don't um, understand what it means. A timely tip for each of you. Print out a property tax bill and understand the taxes assessed by each taxing entity. Mm. City, parish, school board, sheriff, commission, port, biomed, and more. All have a piece of the tax pie. Understand who assesses what millage and notice that the city is not the offender in this issue. Over the next four years, many items will need to be addressed. Following the 2020 census, city council district lines will need to be redrawn. Currently, District D collects approximately 28% of the property taxes collected by the city of Shreveport. 28% out of seven districts. That number should be, or would be closer to 35% if willis Knighton, Christus, and other nonprofit facilities paid property taxes. Somehow we have to find a way to build up all areas of our city and balance this out. Annexations will continue to be a hot topic. Almost all new home construction is localized in a single part of our city. 
solutions to encourage redevelopment in the inner city, and legislation to enable the Shreveport Redevelopment Agency are critical. Economic development, both new jobs and job retention are essential for the future of Shreveport. More citizens earning a living wage, increasing our population, and retaining our existing businesses while recruiting new business is essential. Regionalism is a word I think you're going to hear a lot, and it's the key to econ our future economic development efforts. The Red River can no longer be viewed as a barrier to progress. Long-term maintenance of city-owned buildings continues to be an issue. Every time we build a new building or renovate an existing building, it begins to slowly deteriorate day one after it's opened. Funding sources for ongoing maintenance of highly utilized buildings is needed today along with consideration of eliminating underutilized structures. The tasks and issues facing the new administration and city council are not that different from any administration or city council since 1980. Prioritize, communicate, work your way down the list, and everything's going to be fine. God bless Shreveport, and thank you for trusting me. Can I just be the first to say that makes me feel a little embarrassed because I'm just going to be like, so thanks everyone. <laughs> but, yeah. I'll do that in a minute. <laughs> but he did a great job. Yeah, he did a great, great job. Mike. Thank you, Mike. Uh, <laughs> Councilwoman Lynch. I kind of feel after that speech, you all need to have been meeting with uh, Councilman Corbin instead of Mayor elect Perkins. <laughs> um, certainly, I will talk one-on-one -on -one, uh, privately uh, to the people who have uh, probably impacted me the most the four years uh, that I've been in uh, municipal government. I'll talk to you all before the 29th, one-on-one, <laughs> -on -one, um, but certainly just want to thank, first of all, my constituents um, for allowing me to serve the last four years, uh, this council, working with this council, working with you, Mayor. Um, you know, it's, it's been a ride, uh, and I appreciate it very much. I have no um, regrets whatsoever, as I've said. Um, I, I find some uh, comfort in knowing that the citizens of District F will not have someone new, <laughs> someone who has certainly uh, served in the position uh, on two separate occasions. And so, you know, that was always a big, um, I guess, apprehension of mine is, you know, whether uh, the folks that I had largely represented over 14 years, um, you know, what would happen to them um, if, you know, I was not there to, uh, to see, you know, who the next person would be and if they would care about them uh, and take care of them. So having uh, Councilman Green, someone who has been elected in that district and who has served, I feel very comfortable and very happy uh, that it's, it's uh, a transition that where they know uh, who the representative is and who has served them before. So um, have, Merry Christmas to everyone. Um, still want to see my baby as often as possible. I'll be keeping up uh, with you. From that, I said uh, to some council members in the back, I will not be watching city council meetings. <laughs> uh, <laughs> although I hope you all um, will go to Facebook like the commission has, um, because I think it allows more people to uh, be engaged in what's going on. And I'm, you know, saying, hey, uh, you know, these are young folks that are, you know, that are coming on the scene now. Thank goodness. Uh, I think I saw your interview the other day, uh, Miss Yvette, and you're 40, right? 40? And so that was, um, I didn't get in politics until I was 40 as well. And I was the youngest person out of 12 on the Cattle Parish Commission. And so I'm just uh, elated to see you'll be the only, you know, female. So I'll be looking for you to hold it down uh, for the ladies. And, and hopefully at some point, you know, we'll have more. It's been, it's, well, we'll, we'll talk later. Because there is a dynamic uh, that uh, certainly women uh, are up against, whether that's in, in, in politics 
or in corporate life or what have you. Uh, but thank you all. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Lynch. Uh, Councilman Jenkins. Okay, well, listen, I think uh, Mike did such a phenomenal <laughs> job. It's a little bit difficult to, particularly since, frankly, we went through the exact same eight years <laughs> under the same <laughs> circumstances. <laughs> it would be a bit redundant to mention some things. Um, but certainly an honor to represent District C over the last eight years. Uh, I, people ask me, you're going to be so glad to get off that council, I'm sure. And I said, well, I think I'm going to miss it. Um, Yes. Are there parts I'm not going to miss? There are clearly parts I'm not going Don't to miss. Don't look at me when you say that. <laughs> I didn't mean that. I meant that globally <laughs> sharing the experience of a city council. Um, mm -hmm. but, but no, on the balance, it's been a great experience. Certainly uh, the opportunity to contribute to your community is, uh, you know, something that not everybody gets a chance to do. And so that's, that's been great. I'm going to dovetail into that a little later in my discussion, but, you know, first want to thank Cedric Glover, who under that four years of my life, a very steep learning curve, he showed up uh, as an absolute veteran in the political process and, you know, showed his capabilities in that form. And that was a great experience, I think, for us, you know, sometimes more positive than others but he you know you I learned a lot personally from him on on you know building consensus and what need what you need to do to get things accomplished and certainly uh not that it's been different with mayor Tyler but what I appreciate specifically about the four years with you is you uh always said what you meant and then uh, back that up and did what you said you were going to say. And that's, uh, you know, that's unfortunately not as common in this arena as other arenas. So I always appreciate that particular aspect. And I made my comments specifically to the media on, you know, the four, the four years. And you came in with a real focus on infrastructure and financial management and concrete changes to the city and you, you basically did what you said you were going to focus on and I appreciate that. Um, city attorney, be sure not to include them. Now, I do appreciate uh, city attorney that's been on our side for this last four years and we didn't have the challenges that maybe we had on the first four years. And I don't mean that she was necessarily, but there was more, a little more volatility during the previous four years. And, uh, you know, the what I would recommend to the next council members is absolutely ensure that that city attorney is part of your discussion. When you're trying to put forth legislation and they'll be involved, but insist and push for that. And it is, it is the city's attorney, it is not the mayor's attorney, and, and it is collective. And so that's a key piece and certainly always appreciated his support and Terry's before that. Um, but don't forget that though you have the staff and the audit staff, the city attorney is definitely needs to be a cooperative maneuver for you and get their input on a lot. And uh, you know, that's, that's been you know, an important part of this position. Just wanna say my thanks formally at this and to your predecessor as well. Um, council, you know, eight years. <laughs> got my uh, two of our three amigos here great experience good people different brought different things to the table really appreciate learn from a lot of different folks uh, I do believe that coming in with an open mind to listen to what other people have to say is important whether I've done a good job of that or not that's not necessary I just think part of the deliberative process in in public politics today is that everybody's so predetermined on how they're going to vote before they even give a chance to their colleagues to say something publicly is a, is a shortcoming and I you know I dovetail that into maybe some comments about social media in a moment but so I think trying to let the deliberative process work and 
don't be so fixed on your point of view before you walk into this uh, meeting and just so you get a chance to hear what people have to say um, I think is important because everybody does bring you know something uh, different to the table and just a good learning curve for those of us because be honest I learned a heck of a lot about the city that I didn't know despite being a long time resident so uh, you know do use that uh, need to also of course as Mike points out thank the family for those of us and there are many that have served in this position with young kids um, it's an interesting uh, experience when you maybe get to see see it through the eyes of uh, children some positive some less so but take that on board uh, but uh, they put up with a good bit and need to thank them certainly mrs jenkins she's pretty tough so she didn't really ever pretend that she was going to pass on she said you got an issue with oliver you need to call him direct so uh, <laughs> she operated a little bit differently but every everybody's got their own personality so uh <clears throat> and then you know one thing that i'd like to just bring forward first social media is really in my opinion an impediment to good government there are a lot of there's a lot of information out there that is shaping ideas that is not factual mm -hmm. and in a community mm -hmm. of our size it can be uh, detrimental to the good faith and confidence in your government now does it serve a purpose certainly does but the benefit maybe to Washington DC is very different here in the city of Shreveport um, so how one manages that going forward it's it's a challenge and it is a challenge to either always be responsive to to social media or make it a point to not really be responsive at all and just assume that if somebody wants to get in touch with you they will use the means that are clearly available email text phone call um, but it is a challenge and it's going to be a big challenge as generations or people get younger in these seats um, as they've grown up with it and their colleagues slash peers expect to do business over social media um, you know just do think about your plan for that and how that is going to be to the benefit of good government and communication with the rest of the six or seven of you and the mayor because it can be very counterproductive if not everybody else is seeing the same things that you are stating in certain domains without everybody being appraised of you know your feelings so I, I put that as a point of caution and then lastly you know this is more of a a challenge to the citizens one thing that I'm pretty confident that revenues are not going to increase significantly in the near term and fix our challenges on a revenue alone basis now happy to take that argument with anybody that wants to talk about it but that is not the solution to me the solution is citizen driven uh, taking on more responsibilities and I'm not asking for unreasonable responsibilities taking care of your own garbage trash cleaning up your properties contributing in community events the problem is we use a lot of city resources to do tasks that frankly were not necessarily envisioned when the charter slash municipal government was formed and it's a creep idea i get that but we need to really in my opinion reinforce that kind of a citizenship responsibility if you will that if people are committed to moving our city forward to participate in some level hence this point of participating on city council and then furthermore you know whether it's the 
social media if you've got issues but provide solutions or demand if you're an elected official to hear what those potential solutions are in this public un you know undocumented uh, domain of social media because maybe there is stuff that we can learn and then lastly as our as our systems for the city improve and we get more technologically efficient whether that's report a concern but insist that citizens use the system because the system is available for efficiency everybody uses email more now because there's an inefficiency piece with using letters well why do we have to use why can't we use our report of concern to at least start every discussion about complaints that we get in the city. So then there's a record. Then we can actually focus on our system structures internally to see where the breakdowns are. I'm going to assure you that somebody calls me and says, three weeks ago I called the water department and told them about my problem. It would be great if that person that I call the water department knows exactly who that call was, but I think that's an expectation that, that's unrealistic. And if we had documented a problem three weeks ago, it would have given the administration a chance to work on if efficiencies inside the system, address it. To, and so we need, as I say, for the council and citizens, more involvement, use the systems that are in place, to really uh, you know make the city more efficient because the resources aren't coming and that's where in my opinion the growth benefit in the near term of the city is going to be on those efficiencies and participation so those are my comments Good. Thank all right. you. All right. councilman Everson. all right i talk fast and a lot so i'm going to do both of those just um you know and and see if i can get through all this um first i just want to express such gratitude and thanks to the citizens of District B for giving me the chance to have done this. It's something that, um, you know, growing up in Treeport, I left because there was a lack of opportunity. I came back to make my own opportunity and figure out what I could do because of people like I see Tari Bradford back in the back. I mean, she's somebody who inspired me and motivated me to, to get more involved throughout my life. I was able to meet a lot of other people who, who helped me figure out how to connect at a time when really a lot of my generation now, I know there's a lot of younger people kind of being elected now. I was elected at 31, going out at 40. There is still you know, I'm so proud to see two people right around my age that are that are elected coming in right now. Um, but they're the age I am going off. They're not the age I am when I came on, you know. And there's still um, a, an underrepresentation of certain age groups in our city, you know. Um, and a lot of my friends still aren't involved in politics at all in the way that they should be at, their, at the age we are, you know. And so um, it, it's, it's a, it's a, you know, Streetport is a place that is what you make of it. You can get involved. I hear people say there's these barriers, and there are. They're, they're, but they're not um, unsurmountable. It just takes a little bit of hard work, a little bit of understanding, a little bit of opening yourself up to people who are different. You can find a way in. You can find a way to solve problems and help people. Um, you know, it's funny. One of the last votes we took was on some property standards issues, which are very technical type things. And what would be so much more fun is to do what, like, I think social media has made citizens want, which is if we just passed a resolution that said we're all for lower crime and more jobs, you know, because I think we're all for lower crime and more jobs. Everybody is for lower crime and more jobs. But it is not that easy. It is not, there is such a complicated world and system. So many of the things, and y'all are going to find out as y'all, as the new incoming members and uh, incoming Councilman Green already, already knows this, but, you know, a lot of times with the public sees and what we do, I mean, it's so different. There's so much that I think people maybe don't fully understand, not because it's um, not open to them, but because on a general day-to-day -day basis, you are a citizen with your own life and your own problems and your own things that you got to take care of. And when you get the privilege to serve in one of these seats, you look at a whole heck of a lot more. You become aware of a whole lot of things you didn't know about as a citizen. And I'm not sure if I'm going to look forward to turning that off, or I won't be able to, to be honest. You know, like that, I'm going to drive down the streets. I'm still going to see all those problems. I'm just not going to be the one that people call about it anymore. But, um, but, uh, 
but it is. It's a, a different expectation. But I am so thankful for the opportunity to have to have done it. When I was elected again at 31, I mean, I had just been married a few years. I uh, didn't have any kids. Um, you know, I now have two kids that are, wow, they're amazing. But gosh, that is a lot. Um, you know, and so it has been. Um, I really want to thank everybody who's worked with me around me and who I've represented, who's maybe had a little patience with me if I'm a little. Um, you know, high strung at times. I mean, you know, we, we juggle a lot. And, uh, and I think that um, uh, I'm really thankful to my family. My wife is also, I'm so proud to be married to a woman who is um, such an accomplished professional in her own right. You know, I mean, she is just as big. People always say, oh, now you're off city council. Andrea, your, your lives are going to be so boring now. I'm like, she probably brings me to as many events as I bring her to, you know, <laughs> and I'm proud to support her and maybe have a little bit more time to do that because she's certainly been supportive of me in this role. Um, and um, also in the mode of thanking, I mean, it's been done before and, and I have to echo it. Um, you know, the administration, uh, Mayor Tyler, I'll, I'll get in a little bit later on how to how I think it's expressed, but I mean you have you have made the commitment to those things that aren't particularly easy for our city to do. You have taken care of the hard work that isn't necessarily the fun, exciting, headline grabbing work. It is the difficult, um, laborious, um, you know, detail heavy work that this city needed somebody to to tackle that and I thank you for for your continued focus on that I mean it really um, it, you know I don't, I don't sometimes think people I'll, I'll go ahead and say it now I mean I think um, one of the things about infrastructure now I was on the group that helped to um, work with Barbara and and that team that worked with the consent decree when that was going on during during my first term on council and it was a really major major project um, to have to cease, and we were all nervous about it. We knew it was a big undertaking, but you know, the federal government knew it was a big undertaking. Everybody's nervous. Baton Rouge spent like 20 times what they said they were going to spend on it. I mean, this was this is a challenge, but to see that we have come in under schedule, but ahead of schedule, you know, over budget in the first phase, but then drastically learned lessons and came in a lower budget, lower budget on every project so we can catch back up. Um, you know, developing innovative ways and, and different ways to modify that. But the thing is, is that it's sewer work. I mean, you know, sewer work, there's a reason that people kick that can down the road for 50 years. And it's that it's disruptive. It, you know, Stephanie and I can certainly attest to that. It started in our district. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> It, it started in our districts and now it's on another side of my district. So I've seen it on two sides of my district in two different phases, but it's disruptive. It's expensive and it's not particularly gratifying when it's completed. Nobody is inviting their cousins over to come see their new sewer. You know, it's not like a community center or something that everyone's so proud of, but it has to be done. I mean, because otherwise you got sewer in your yard, you know, and like you may not see it, but aren't you glad to know it's not there? You know, that's what government's there for. We're due to that. We're there to provide those services that have to be done. And I appreciate y'all so much for sticking to that, even though I know it was difficult. I know it wasn't always particularly understood because the other thing is, having worked in, inf in this infrastructure committee for a few years, you know, our city again, for decades and decades and decades, did not do what it needed to do for infrastructure. And over the past couple of administrations, we have had some turnaround and focus on actually catching back up on years of neglect. But I always tell people, if you don't sweep your house for 10, 15, 20 years, and you go to start cleaning it, you're going to find some things you didn't want to find, you know, and you're going to forget how to sweep as cleanly as you, you once knew how to. You're not gonna, you're gonna be out of practice. And this city, this community, our contracting community, our uh, you know, larger community, we weren't used to doing projects of this volume. I mean, this has been a huge catch up project and will continue to be. So anyway, um, I'll move on from that, but it is, um, it is really exciting to have been uh, a part of that. I hope it continues. I hope that we continue to make that investment because the city is worth it. We're worth the disruption. We're worth the um, expense. You know, the, the citizens in this uh, city are amazing. Um, and, you know, I think it's just is going to come down to explaining explaining it to people a little bit. You know, we're going to have to learn a better way to communicate it a little bit. 
Um, thanks again to all the staff members. I mean, you know, I see Bill Gooden. I see, I mean, just so many people that take my calls at uh, crazy hours asking crazy questions about things that concern me. And I'm like, I just need to know what's happening. Um, you know, it's, it's so helpful to have that and to be able to serve our citizens knowing that we have so many dedicated public servants. I mean, I, I hear people talk about questioning motives of this action or that action. And while I'm sure there's, there's some reason that people have a basis in, in, in not understanding other people's motivations, once you've had a chance to work around people in this building, I, I, I really don't question people's intent and, and good heartedness near as much as um, you know, I did before I came down here. There are some very, very dedicated people in this, in this uh, organization. The vast majority of them are. Um, I have certainly uh, enjoyed so much working with all you different council members, council staff, um, you know, I, it's fun to see the newly elected council members coming in and they get to see the sage wisdom of Arthur Thompson <laughs> and, you know, the, um, you know, the kind of, um, I, don't, I don't know, Tanya's, Tanya's a Sagittarius like uh, Levette and I and, and, like, I just get her. So, like, I, it's so easy to just be like, so what's this mean, Tanya? <laughs> like, she, she'll get it right away. And Jackie with all the, I mean, Jackie, God bless her. I said this during the budget meeting, but she had a lot of patience with me. I do. I, I'm, I'm pushy. I leave no stone unturned. I keep looking for ways to solve problems because I think that's what my constituents want. And I appreciate all of y'all. Karen, I mean, Karen has put so much work into helping me. And uh, Julie before her, you know, just, um, and, and really through extension of William, I mean, just a tremendous work from the city attorney's office. The auditing staff can't let Lennis go um, unrecognized. They do amazing work. And it's all on record. It's a great place to start. As a council person, if you need to know, like, what, what things could I help with or where could I, you know, where could I look for policy to improve things? Look at an audit. I mean, they, they have amazing suggestions. They're literally just books of suggestions on how to make things better. <laughs> like, um, so um, develop ways, in, in, in speaking to what um, Oliver mentioned, when we were elected, social media wasn't around. Um, there, I mean, it was vaguely around for a few of us. I mean, it was a fun way for me to see what drink specials were going on in town at the time. You know, it very much is different than that now. And that has come through the course of this time. And I've seen it's really changed the way people express their concerns, the way they digest information, <coughs> the way they ask questions. Um, and, and just want to echo, develop a, a strategy that works for you. Um, you know, how to be... Um, communicative but also to be able to relay information in the right way um, you know that's that's going to be an ever-changing thing um, as it as communication goes more online um, and people online start to feel more of a dominant um, part of that conversation you may see that some of your people who aren't online because remember there are people that aren't on Facebook um, and they have opinions too and um, they uh, they don't always agree with the way those public conversations go. Sometimes they do, you know. But it, that's a that's a newer that's a newer ground that you'll have to learn how to navigate. Um, uh, let's see. Um, one of the things that I think is helpful in a lot of what has gone on in city council is um, to remember what your job is. I mean, you're a legislator, you know. We are the legislators. Now we get involved in problem solving and all these other things because our constituents expected of us not because it's actually in our job description I mean that's not we actually don't have a lot of the powers that people in the public think we have but that doesn't mean we don't try to help them <laughs> you know but sometimes being helpful is just directing them to the right resource or the right person to talk to you don't have to pretend that you're gonna you know like that you're responsible for something you're not responsible for because you, you really shouldn't um, and um, but you'll learn ways to do that um, and and people will oftentimes remember you for those things that aren't really your role or the main thing that you're doing that is the best thing for the community. They'll remember you for something else, something you said or something, you know, some media event or something. But don't let that discourage you from doing the work that you know you should be doing. Um, you know, there is, um, there's a, um, a quote by Mother Teresa, uh, it's often quoted in different ways, but it's the do it anyway prayer. I don't know if y'all are familiar with it. I'll just read a few lines, but it's, um, you know, if you're kind, people may accuse you of selfish ulterior motives, but be kind anyway. If you're successful, you'll give, you'll win some unfaithful friends and some genuine enemies. Succeed anyway. If you're honest and sincere, people may deceive you. Be honest and sincere anyway. What you spend years creating, others could destroy overnight, create anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, some may be jealous, but be happy anyway. 
The good you do today will often be forgotten. Do good anyway. Give the best you have and it will never be enough. Give your best anyway. And the final analysis, it's between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. And uh, <laughs> I don't know why that got me emotional, but it did. <laughs> you know, no sense of pretending it didn't. But, um, but it does. It reminds you of a lot of times this job can be challenging, and it's totally worth doing. The people you get to represent are amazing. I have so many just amazing people that uh, I've gotten a chance to work for, and I'm going to miss them. Thanks a lot. <laughs> had uh, Councilwoman Lynch. Yes, I won't be long because I got a tinker and I've sat through two long, three long speeches. <laughs> uh, I don't have a, a, uh, a main man to thank, to thank. I'm not married. You got six of us up here. I'm not married, but there are several that I do need to. So I'm just going to thank you all since I don't have, <laughs> since I don't have one of my own. Uh, one I want to thank uh, Art Thompson, uh, and I've heard a lot of names today, and I've heard his name kind of, you know, mentioned throughout everyone's speech, but I don't want the, the, the and certainly I'm not talking to you, Reverend Green, because I know you know, um, the new council members to underestimate uh, the value that the uh, city uh, clerk provides to the council. Um, I, hear, I heard a lot about institutional knowledge, you know, folks having institutional knowledge when I came and it seemed like everyone wanted to ascribe that role to anybody that had worked at the city over 35 years. Well, they're just institutional. That don't mean they know anything just because they've been here 35 or 40 years. Um, but art, to me, was an example of someone who truly possesses institutional knowledge. Um, a lot of it he could just whip off the top of his head, you know, <laughs> from 30, 40 years ago. He just seems to be able to remember that. Uh, so thank you, Art. I mean, I'll talk to others privately, but I did want to publicly say thank you so much. Um, we didn't talk a whole lot, but I watched you. And um, I am taking away some valuable uh, lessons from you uh, as I go forward, um, as well as you, Mayor, as well as you, as well. But I do want to say that um, Mr. Flurry, Councilman Flurry, and Councilman Bradford, thank you all. I do want to say that I think if I had gotten rid of someone like y'all did, I would have been reelected. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> May I think that's what we needed to head down. We had to got rid of somebody. <laughs> uh, I have uh, City Attorney William Bradford speak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was going to wait till public comments. I didn't fit in any of those categories, but I'll take it now. Um, I just want to say what a job and what a journey. Um, I appreciate more than anything the opportunity to serve as city attorney over the last four years. It's been a learning experience beyond measure for me and my family. I want to thank the mayor especially for taking a 31-year-old lawyer who was in private practice running trains and trying to find work and trusting in me to help lead and bring leadership to a department that is very essential to the operations of the city and I appreciate the council for finding the courage to confirm me and help with that appointment. Um, you know, it's not lost on me the things and sacrifices that have occurred for me to actually serve in this capacity, and I hope to pass that on to the folks that follow me, too. I, I can't stress enough the importance of remaining vigilant and remaining an active part of this community, and so I, I rest assured I will be and will be happy to serve in any capacity um, moving forward, you know, both in my civic life and, and what, what may be to come. I couldn't leave today without saying thank you from the bottom of my heart. And, uh, you know, a lot's happened in the last four years. I've got a <laughs> brand new family, a brand new wife, and we're waiting on a brand new baby. So, with that being said, I'll be here for any of your needs, and I'll be here as a friend and as a concerned citizen. But more importantly, I'll be here as a member of our community in Shreveport. So, thank you. Thank you. All right. 
I done lost the track of where we were now. You're done. Um, <laughs> no public comments. No, I don't have any public comments. So um, I did. Well, I did want to bring up something that uh, something that came. That's totally different now. But something that came up the last meeting, um, we had a member to come up and speak and state about. And I think it was some. I think it was categorized wrong, rather. We, we stated that we had a city employee uh, who was murdered, um, which was not, which didn't constitute as really as a um, city employee, but he did work for uh, a staffing uh, agency uh, who did work for the city. Um, and it was felt as if the city did not give any uh, concerns to that employee or whatever, and that was not the case. If I can, make, if that makes sense to you, so I just wanted to go on record and say that that was not, you know, a, a true, accurate uh, a statement that was made. Um, I think that we all care about people who, especially those employed by the city, and we try to attend those services and visit the family uh, members uh, of that person too. So I just want to state that and go on record about that. Um, if there's nothing else, then um, this meeting is a joke. Happy right. birthday, Levant. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday.